Hello there, Ray here, and these are four new automatic farms to get tons of frog lights, from easy to super efficient. These are part of my 37 new farms and machines for 1.19, and a part of my Farm Everything series, where I'm over 94% of the way to farming every item in the game of Minecraft. You can check that all out in the description after the video. Now we'll show you the tricks which make this farm possible while doing the tutorial build. Frog lights are great for survival because they produce a lot of light, like a torch, and they also come in three different color variations. Plus, you can also click on different sides of block to actually get the, their directional look. On top of that, they are super fast to mine up, even with using the hand, and they drop the block immediately, without needing to have silk touch. So to build my simple frog light farm here that produces almost 2,000 frog lights per hour and around 180 magma cream per hour, you first want to start off by actually building this little box around a magma cube spawner from a bastion. I covered how you can do that in this video here. Once you get the whole box completed with the right dimensions, we're then just going to come in and place in some hot or snow in a bucket two blocks above the floor. So we have an air gap underneath of it. Then we're going to space out these powder snows every other block and there's going to be a gap around the outside of it so it looks like this when you're finished. Then we're going to go underneath of the floor layer which is this glass right here. Go one gap of air underneath. This is where we're going to then place in another platform. The platform center is mostly going to be made out of power rails going across the entire thing. Then we're going to use some normal rails to connect them all together. These are going to start in one corner right underneath of it and they're going to go that direction and zigzag across the entire thing all the way to the opposite side and they should end with the rails pointing into the end of this corner. Then we're just going to come in and place in a block. These power rails are then going to all be powered using levers underneath. You could just come in underneath and place them all in and power them so you have a source of power. On one of the ends we're going to then place in this minecart unloader. This is done by not having a block here and coming in and placing in a hopper and having a power rail underneath of it with a chest underneath. We're going to then put a comparative coming out of this hopper into a block which has a torch above it into a block which has a redstone dust that is right beside it with a solid block underneath. And when the minecart comes with stuff it will unload it into the hopper and will completely finish unloading before it will take off once again getting all your loot nicely stored away. Now it doesn't actually take very many frogs to keep up with the magma cream. If you really want to, you could just have a single frog. I'd say between one and five is a decent amount. Now you don't have to worry about the frogs actually freezing because they stand underneath of the powder snow for the majority of the time. When they hop through it, they don't stay in it long enough to get cold and die. To run this farm like any mob spawner farm, you just need to be close enough so that the little character that's in the center is turning in circles. And then you can go AFK. Or you have the option to build this one for the spawner. The only difference is we have Iron Golem pulling all of these guys to a central location where we kill them with the frogs and the boats and the items being collected in a little bit smaller area. So now we need to gather some frogs so we can actually supply our farm to get the frog lights. Now if you just want to get the pearlescent frog light, all you have to do is find the frogs in the swamps, either mangrove or normal. And those frogs will be normally the white ones, which will automatically produce this type of light. But if you want to go for the other two colors as well, we'll have to do some special extra steps in order to get those color frogs. So what you'll need is some slime, a water bucket, leads, preferably a lighter with rockets. So what you first want to do is then find those natural frogs and go ahead and use your slime balls to breed them up. And then go ahead and once they are bred, they will put in some frog spawn. Now we'll have to actually wait for this to hatch. And what I recommend doing is actually walling this off so that once it does hatch, we can easily catch all the tadpoles that are coming out of it. Just like this, now we just have to wait a while until it actually hatches, which could be 10 minutes. Once the tadpoles hatch, now we're going to use our bucket of water. If we do F3 plus B, we got to see how big they are. We click on them and we right click, we'll pick them up in the bucket. Now we actually have this guy so we can move them about. Now you want to transport this tadpole over to a different biome, depending on which color you want. Since it's easy to get the white ones, you probably want to go for the orange ones or the green ones. And you can use this biome chart here to decide where to actually place in the frog in a biome that is near you for the appropriate color. We're just going to come in and place this tadpole in a hole right here. 
and then we can let him grow up naturally which takes 20 minutes or we could feed him some slime balls and then he will grow up nice and big. Now this is where our lead and elytra come in. We can place a lead onto him to easily transport these guys. You can do several of them at once. Put our elytra on and we can use our rockets. Now we need to move this guy to wherever we have our frog light farm. You can either try moving him through the nether which would make it shorter using nether portals. Or you can transport the frog with the elytra. But you first need to stack up. I'd recommend doing this over top of water. In case you mess up the frog doesn't die you want to stack up enough so that the frog is dangling with the lead not touching the ground use your elytra and then make sure you're pointing straight upwards and double jump and use one rocket to get up in the air you can see the frog comes along with you now you can transfer them a great distance to wherever your nether portal is to get the frog into the farm and then when you land try to land in water as well now we'll show you guys this farm here which produces a lot of frog lights. It also is big enough where you can hit the mob cap making it as efficient as you need to get. So the first thing you'll want to do is find the correct biome. This is a basalt delta. This is where we're going to build the farm. You then want to go above the bedrock if you're in Java edition. Otherwise, if you're in bedrock edition, you will want to just build the farm underneath where there is mostly a big empty spot so that you can build it directly underneath of this and try AFK above it as much as you can. For Java, we're gonna build it above the bedrock ceiling. You can get up here by using this trick shown in this video, link below. We wanna make sure the entire farm is inside of the biome. So let's say this is where you're going to build the farm. Just make sure out 16 blocks in each direction from it is still the basalt delta. So first off, we're gonna build in the rail system. So we're gonna put power rails on all sides of this. This is where the iron golem will eventually be placed in. And then we're going to build the actual collection system for the frog lights. So we'll come in and the rail system will finish by looking just like this here. Doesn't really matter how you do it as long as you can collect all the frog lights in this 11 by 11 area. These rails will eventually be powered from above. And then once you're done, you'll go out this direction, 12 blocks or more. This is where we're going to build in our place to unload the minecart so we can actually get the loot out of it. So we're first going to start with a hopper on top of this block pointing into the nearby block which will be a storage chest over here. Then we're going to go behind this and place in some blocks like this. Then on the side of the hopper we're going to read if there's any items inside. We're going to put that power into this block which is going to go into the torch. The torch is then going to put the power over here into this redstone. That's going to operate this power rail right here and we'll have some normal rails right beside it. And put another dust up here just to prevent magma cubes from spawning there. Now you can put your hopper minecart in and if it has any items inside of it it will stop there and unload them into the chest. There's also room to extend this storage here. You can come in with more chests that can be placed in just like so. Now we're going to go back to the center. We're going to place walls one block above which is just above the rails. We're going to make a circle out of it then we're going to come in and make a double circle. We'll eventually put the iron goal in the center, but for now, we're going to go on the outside of this and place in trapdoors going straight out, going two blocks. And then we're going to place in two more besides those. We'll do this for each of the four sides. That looks like this. Now we're going to go out with a block that mobs can spawn on top of, and we're going to go out a total of 12 blocks on each side of this. Easy way to do counting with blocks is just put 12 in your hotbar so once you run out you are done. So then it'll look like this. Now we just need to come in and place in some redstone blocks here. That way our minecart will be able to take off and also some minecarts here. Make sure to put those trapdoors back down the way they were. Now we just need to put in a bunch of spawning places for all the magma cubes to spawn in. What we're going to do is actually connect this ends of each of these to the other ones. It doesn't really matter how you do this or what type of shape you make. Circle is one option. You could also just make a square. The circle is a little bit more efficient shape because it doesn't matter where the magma cube spawns in. It's able to be close enough to see the golem. Now it will look something like this here. I want to make sure that this rail system is not being blocked so the minecart can actually still access this part up here. Now we can come in with whatever types of walls you want and put walls on the outside and up one layer from the floor and we're just going to go around the entire thing outlining it with this. 
now it should look something like this. Make sure your minecart can also fit through underneath. Now we just need to raise these walls up so that they are a total of four walls tall. That way none of the big guys can actually escape your little prison here. Walls are slightly smaller than normal blocks so they could let a medium sized magma cube spawn against it. So now the walls should be this tall. I also came in here and filled in this hole with some trap doors so the minecart can still get through. Now it's time to put in the iron golem. We'll build it just like this T-shape. Put the pumpkin here and he should fall directly inside just like so. Now we're going to place some blocks above him so that the magma cubes will come close to him but they won't be able to actually get to him. Now it's time to come in with the frogs. We're gonna put these guys in boats so that they stay near the center and so they don't end up falling in the holes that are over there with the walls. Placing the boats just by clicking them against these trap doors here. And then standing in here, if you press F3 plus B, the hitboxes, just kind of shove them over into the corners. One there and then one over here, push them. And once they're in the corner, you can bring your frog over with a lead and kind of drag him over top so he falls in the little hole that's just beside the boat. This hole right here. And just like so, you can get each of the frogs into the boats and put in two frogs in each. And remember to come in with different colored frogs if you want different colored frog lights. Now next up, we just want to make sure the magma cubes don't end up on top of the golem because they won't be able to see it and they won't be able to die. So we're going to raise this with a total of three blocks with a slab on top all the way around. It'll look like this. Then just come in and slab this inside so we get nothing spawning in here. Now what we'll do is we'll go out and from the center slab here, we'll go out all the way to this side. So you're one block away from that side. And we'll also go all the way out this side to you're also one block away. Now we're going to go back to the center and we're going to make little ribs that comes off from the center point. So we're going to take this side all the way to the edge until you're at least four blocks from the edge. This way gas won't be able to spawn inside this big huge spawning place. The only thing we should get is different size magma cubes. And we're going to place these ribs in every four blocks since gas need a 5x5. Five five. Four is too small for them to spawn in. So it should look something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect but we can stop gas from spawning in. In order to do that, we do need to add in trapdoors underneath of these. This is so that gas don't spawn, but it's still thin enough so that the big magma cubes can still easily kind of hop their way over here without bumping their head too much and slowing them down. So it should end up looking like this. You don't need to put trapdoors in that center rib piece. So now it's time to add in the powder snow. That's going to go one block up and out like this over top of the frogs. You can get this stuff from some cold biome. Just pick it up. I recommend having at least two pieces over each of these. And if you want to kill them a bit faster, you can go ahead and place in some more powder snow out here. Just like so around the whole thing. Magma cubes are war mobs, so they do freeze faster in the powder snow than normal mobs. So the best place to AFK this is above. So we're going to go straight up all the way to the very top of the world. This way when the player stands up there, the Saphir where mobs can spawn in is so small that it's just a little small circle right where our farm is sitting. All the mobs will then be forced to spawn directly in there and we can get some decent rates. Once here, everything else is being done automatically. You can just come in and pick up your frog lights whenever you need them. This farm here produces 4,000 frog lights and 600 magma cream per hour. And if you want tons of frog lights, use my mini underload portal farm here, which has it in a basalt delta. And this will produce tons and tons of magma cubes. These are just coming over to the overworld. And we got some powder snow here, freezing them, splitting to little ones. And then just load the bottom with tons of frogs, which will slurp these guys up. And that many portals will produce almost 70,000 frog lights per hour. More than you'll ever need. Now check out my playlist about all simple farms and machines. Or this one with the goal of trying to make a farm for every item in the game of Minecraft. You can check out the progress on this document here, link below. And be sure to let others know that I have all these amazing farms and machines for 1.19. Thank you all for leaving a like and subscribing. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!